So what I'd like to show you is how to put in finishes uh, into a perspective drawing, much like this one. Um, eventually, uh, something like this is what we are looking at how to achieve, how to get these wood slats to actually go into perspective with everything. What I did is I first found the uh, perspective that I wanted to work with. This is something I found online. And then I also found finishes that I wanted to work with. So this is the wallpaper and this is going to be the floor. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to go back to my original perspective and I want to make a copy of the background. Currently it's locked so let's right click on the actual layer and select duplicate layer. I'm going to leave it named background copy. It just helps me remember that this is the original layer with all of the line work on it. Click OK and you'll notice that it did indeed give me another layer named background copy. Now because this first one is locked, I'm just going to go ahead and hide it by selecting on the eyeball icon. It's still there, it's just out of our vision. Now I want to put the wood floor down here onto this uh, perspective. So I'm going to go to the wood pattern and I'm actually going to drag it out a little bit so that I can see both the wood pattern and the perspective itself. Using the Move tool on the Photoshop toolbar, I'm going to click and drag this photo into the drawing, and you'll see that it actually does that quite easily. I'm going to redock this particular finish and go back to the perspective. Now currently, um, I could put it in here and uh, we could make it work for this particular picture, but it's not in perspective. I need to get these wood slats into the perspective as though it's going back to the vanishing point. How I do that is with the wood selected, go up to image and go to transform and hit perspective. It doesn't look like much change, but as soon as I move my cursor over one of the grip points, uh, you'll see that I have a white arrow. And if I move this directly to the right, you'll see how it actually takes that image and puts it into a perspective-like form. Now the best way to work with this is to try to align the back two corners of your picture with the back two corners of where the wall meets the floor. And it's a little bit tricky because it tends to want to go from the center and so just try to get it as best you can and then once you have an idea as to where it could be then you can kind of start moving this out. Now it's okay if it's going off of the picture um, we're not really too worried about that right now and I'm always kind of checking to see like maybe where this corner would actually be so I'm going to do something similar to here now the more I bring it out, the more I can double check it and see how flat it's going. It's not a perfect perspective. Um, it could be drawn a little bit closer, but this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm actually going to overlap the lines just a little bit. I did miss a little bit here, but that's okay. As soon as I get it placed and it's looking like I want it to, I'm going to hit enter. So now we have the wood floor going into the drawing and it looks great it's all in perspective but it is covering up the furniture so here's how we're going to do this I'm going to temporarily hide layer one and actually before I do that I'm going to name it wood floor it's always good to get into the habit of naming your layers I'm going to temporarily hide it and then I'm going to come and make sure that background copy is selected over in the layer panel and I'm going to take my ooh ah pixie dust magic wand tool and I'm going to select where the floor should be. Now you kind of have to go through and make sure that you hit all of the areas that would be the floor. Now we've got a little place here in this briefcase area. I'm going to hit shift with the magic wand tool um, selected and we're going to grab that make sure that I got everything selected around this table and chair set. I think we're looking good. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Now, it's okay to have this part selected. This is where I want the furniture to go. But what I actually want to do is erase um, the floor out of where um, the rest of the perspective is. So I'm going to do a select and an inverse select. And now you can see that I have marching ants along the border. 
I'm going to come back to the wood floor with all of that selected. I'm going to unhide it. And now I'm going to take my trusty eraser and I'm going to erase it out. I'm going to erase everything out of the picture so that the furniture is back on top. Now there might be a better way to do this with an adjustment layer. I've never worked with adjustment layer in perspective, but you know, this is good enough. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit control D to deselect everything. And now you can see that I got a wood floor that's in and it's almost in perspective. This line probably should have been drawn a little bit differently, but that's okay. Now time to move on to the wallpaper as well. And I want that to go along this wall. So kind of the same idea. I'm going to open up the wallpaper, drag it out, use the move command. It is currently selected already, so make sure that you select all, grab it, and then move it right into the drawing. I'll redock this and come back to the perspective. With that in place, I'm going to go to transform and perspective. Again, I need to work from the back and work my way forward, but I might make this a little bit bigger um, this way and then kind of shrink it up. Try to match it to that back wall a little bit. It takes a lot of adjustment and a lot of practice to work with it, so if you're not getting it the first time, don't worry, neither am I. Something similar to that. I do want it to kind of um, overlap where the floor line and the ceiling line is a little bit. So, and then I need to bring this out. So again, like I said, it takes a little bit of adjustment and then readjustment. Something kind of like that and then bring it down. Let's see here. How's this looking? We'll just bring this guy down a little bit here. Overlap a little bit, maybe go up a little bit here. Same up top. Control out a little bit. Just want to see kind of what I can do. And you can take your time and kind of get it adjusted a little bit better than what I've got it, but it's close enough. So I'm going to hit enter to say I'm done messing with this object. I'm going to hide that object. I'm going to go back to the background copy. Make sure that's selected. If it's not selected, you're going to get weird selections from your magic tool wand. This is where all the dark lines are, and that's how Photoshop knows what to select. Magic wand and grab this right here. I do have a, quite a few places here in this uh, table and chair area that I need to make sure that I get. Magic wand, hold down the shift while you click to add selections. Something like that. Looks like I missed a little bit for the wood floor, but that's okay. And as soon as I have everything where I think the wallpaper is going to show in this picture, um, I am done selecting everything. I hit enter to say I'm done selecting. I'm going to come back to the wallpaper. Oh, need to rename it, don't I? Good habit. Wallpaper. I'm going to unhide it. I do need to make sure that um, before I do that, that I do this select inverse. I always forget to do that, so in case that happens to you, we can still do it here. So now I've got the marching ants all the way around the selection. Come back to the wallpaper layer, make sure it's highlighted, and now I can use my eraser tool. Where did you go? There you are. And I can erase out everything around it, even the picture and the clock. And that is how you get wallpaper and floors into your drawing. Now that you've completed the room, it's time to kind of start looking at what kind of textures and fabrics and colors do I want to add to the room. Now as you can see on this perspective, I got a little eclectic. I was just playing around and doing a lot of different things. So let's concentrate on what to do and how to put a pattern into the perspective. I'm going to go back to this drawing. And I need to first find the picture that I want to work with. So I'm going to go to File, 
and I'm going to go to open and I've already downloaded a fabric that I want to work with so I'm going to click open and once I get it in Photoshop it looks very lovely what I need to do is tell Photoshop that I want to make this a pattern so that it can repeat it and repeat it and repeat it over and over and over so in order to do that I make sure that I select all and then I come to edit and I go down to where it says define pattern I'm going to just name this um, couch fabric one. I already have one in there um, but I'm gonna redo it just so that you can see how it works. So couch fabric one. Maybe I've got five couches. I don't know that I'll have different patterns. I'm gonna click OK and it doesn't look like it did anything but what actually happened is Photoshop put it into its memory. So now I can go back to the perspective with the background copy selected in the layers panel I'm going to take my magic wand tool and I'm going to select all areas of the couch that I want to have um, that pattern. Make sure that you hold down the shift to select multiple areas. Make sure I got everything. Looks good. Once I do that, I'm going to come down here to this little icon. It looks like a broken Oreo or a half moon or I don't know. I like the broken Oreo scenario so that's the adjustment layer and it's gonna allow me to fill this area in with a pattern so all I do is I click on the adjustment layer and I go to pattern because I just put that pattern in it allows me to um, access it right away you can click on this arrow to see other patterns that are available to you now this pattern is a little bold and maybe I just want it a little bit smaller so using the scale I can take this down. Um, 60 looks nice. That, that could work. Looks like a good couch. Now it's not in perspective. This couch is pretty elevational, so this is going to work. Um, I'm not sure how to get it if I needed to put the pattern into perspective. That might be something uh, an advanced person might know a little bit. So you have to be kind of careful when you're using patterns um, and any objects that are in perspective, like this right here. Um, might not work as well with that kind of pattern but I like the way that this is looking it looks realistic enough so I'm gonna hit OK and there is the couch now if I just want to do a solid color for instance um, maybe I just want to have a gray table right here I have to go back to the background copy to select a new area because that's where all the line work is using the magic wand tool and I'm gonna select the top of the table. Now if I just want to do uh, a color I can come in here to the adjustment layer and in do solid color instead. And that's where I can pick uh, the color that I want and you can see it previews it below so if maybe if I just want a, mm, a green table or anything like that I'm actually just gonna stick with gray. I'm gonna hit OK. Now if at any time that I need to change that color all I do is double click on the color thumbnail that is located with that layer and I can come back in and change it at any time. That's what I really like about the adjustment layer is you're not stuck and you don't have to do it on top of it you just simply change it a little bit. So I'm going to go back to a darker gray color something kind of like that and hit OK. So every time you want to put in a new color you have to come back to the background copy make sure that it is highlighted use your magic wand tool to grab things out. I'm going to show you how to do the window so I'm actually going to grab both windows. It's going to leave the lines in there and if I want to put a picture in those windows I'm actually going to erase that out. Now a lot of graphic design people are probably going to be like you need to do a layer mask which you can um, but I'm kind of a I need it to be quick and easy so um, I'm not really too concerned about the integrity of the photo. So I did that, but it looks like I missed a couple spots. So here and here underneath there. So I'm going to control D to deselect. I'm going to reselect those areas. Shift to grab two. Erase those out as well. All right, we're looking good. Control D to let go. So now we've got the checkerboard background and that just means that there's nothing back there if I were to make a picture of this there it would just be blank back there I could put any color back there that I'd want to 
Um, so I'm actually going to do a file open and I've already found a landscape that I like to put in the background. No, isn't that beautiful? I'd love to have that in my background. I'm going to drag it down and much like what we did with the other drawings, I'm going to grab it and move it into here and drop it. Now this particular drawing is ginormous and <laughs> as you can see the way that it came in, it came in underneath objects. So, but that's good. I want it to go into the background a little bit but I need to shrink this up quite a bit. So I'm going to move this whole thing down and while we're in this mode I can actually take those grips, hit shift to keep it all in the same um, ratio and I'm moving it down to make the picture smaller. And it's a little bit of back and forth but that's okay. So there we go, we're kind of looking good there but you know you can still tell that I'm kind of in the middle of objects and things like that. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to put it underneath the background copy. Well actually I need to hit enter first to say hey I'm done adjusting that. Now I can take it and put it under the background copy and you'll see that it actually goes in like a picture. Now that is pretty darn bright and there's supposed to be glass right here that I can see. So I'm actually going to take the opacity which is found over here in the layers panel. Make sure that that layer, actually I'm going to name it uh, backyard. And I'm going to drop the opacity down a little bit so that it kind of emulates that there is a window. Yes, I'm going to see some checkered, but when we go to make this an actual picture, um, it's going to be beautiful. And there you have uh, the starting of this. Again, use your adjustment layers to add colors or patterns. Um, you can even do a gradient. Let me demonstrate a gradient using the lamp over here. Um, so again, background copy magic wand, highlight the area that you want to add, go to the broken Oreo, we're going to do gradient this time. Now if I click here you're going to see all different types of gradients that you can use. For this particular one I'm going to use one that is solid filled but it's between black and white and I'm going to click off of that so that I can come down here. I'm going to click on the actual picture itself so that I can tell uh, Photoshop exactly what colors that I want to use. So if I double click on these little boxes with triangles on top of it, it takes me to an area where I can actually start choosing what I want my gradient to look like. So I'm going to do something kind of natural on that part. Click OK. And here's a tricky part. I'm going to move this over here a little bit and then I'm going to click where that used to be and it gives me another option to add colors. So again, I'm going to kind of find something similar to what I just did. Maybe a little bit lighter on that side, a little different. And then click OK. And that's what the gradient is going to look like. I'm going to move some of this stuff over so that you can see it. Once I get that, I'm going to just hit OK just to see what it does. I guess I have to hit OK over here first. Then OK. And you'll see that I got some color on top and some on the bottom which is fine, but I actually want to change that up a little bit. So I'm going to click on the thumbnail of that color over in layers. And I'm actually going to put it at zero. Let's see what that does. Okay. There we go. That's what I wanted a little bit more. I wanted some shading on this side and this side. So it looks like lights kind of coming through right here in the middle. Um, that's how you can do some shading with a gradient. So there's lots of options. You can make this anything that you want to. Again, here is mine, so I have leather chairs, I even got a leather briefcase, a fun little hat, you know, yellow tulips, a green phone, very eclectic space. I know a couple of people who would absolutely love this. Um, but that is how you can put finishes into a perspective.